I have a disease called polymyalgia rheumatic, PMR. I became nearly completely immobile. Uh huh. You know, buttoning a shirt, opening a water bottle, driving a car, getting dressed. Robbed me of enthusiasm and motivation. So you got to rely on discipline. Yeah. Discipline will trump motivation. Either. Follow that discipline and you start moving, you develop a motivation. You start nurturing that flame mm-hmm. into a fire. You know, into a blaze, into an inferno. We just did a badass workout. We did a badass gym tour. <laughs> Got Mr. Pat McNamara over here. Thank you for having me over here in your driveway gym. Right on. Thank and, you for coming uh, by. I've been following you for several years on Instagram, yeah. taking some of your exercises as inspiration for things. And now we're doing an outdoor podcast. Uh, have you guys ever seen a <laughs> dead cats on <laughs> podcast set it before? Woo-hoo. Have you seen it before? Uh, no. Okay, Not me neither. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Hope, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. Pat, you are a co-owner of Invader Coffee. Yep. And this is air-roasted coffee. I've never had anything like that. Yep. It's really good. It harnesses the uh, flavor of the entire bean. You know, there's very few companies that actually do uh, uh, air roasting. Yeah. You know, it's a more laborious and more expensive process. So, But the end result is fantastic. It's great. It's awesome. I can't wait to try it out. That's my own blend. It's got my own artwork on the yeah. cover. Yeah. Uh, so it's a double dark. Um, it's super, super smooth. The T Max Blaze Ops blend, and yep. you also have the Get You Some bands. Get you some. Which bands. this is the first time I've used these. I like bands for stretching, but these are these are great. Like I like the length. I like mm-hmm. the tension. I like what you can do with them. They're different from all the other bands I've used before. You know, so. you, it's like a travel gym. You could stuff those in a suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the things I like about you most is uh, you just make do with what you got. Got to. And I just love that attitude. Right but uh, you, uh, U.S. Army, uh, retired Special Forces. Yep. Delta Force for 12 years yep. uh, in the service for 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read something, your U.S. Premier Hostage Rescue Unit. Is, is that, that was Yeah, that was in Delta. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I, I got to ask, like, what, hostage mm-hmm. rescue, like, what, I don't actually know what that means. I guess it's just rescuing hostages. Right. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's one of the things that the unit does. Okay, one of many. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But you're uh you're approaching sixty now. Yes, you've been working out for probably forty years. Yep, yep. And since uh, uh yeah, since uh, I start, I think I started working out around fourteen years old. That's yeah, that's about Re- when you I know was wrestling. Yeah. yeah, wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The badass. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't when I started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was a pretty gentle, flaccid, uh, young boy. Yeah. With, uh, but for, I had reason I wanted to start into sports. Um, and I was encouraged by a neighbor of mine and I sucked bad. My first two years didn't win anything, but second year I won one match. And then, um, what I realized is I liked winning. Yeah. Winning is good. So then I started applying myself more, you know, being more self-governed. Uh-huh. Instead of just working out with the team, I'd work out a lot on my own. And uh, How'd you get into wrestling? A, like, did your dad throw you in it? No. Um, a, uh, a neighbor of mine suggested that I start sport in school. Okay. Um, Why'd you listen to him? Well, he, it, my, he was a mentor of mine. My sure. dad liked him. Uh, um, I had a, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I had an older brother who tormented me. Yeah. I mean, it was bad. Matter of fact, most of the neighborhood kids would torment me because I was an easy target. Huh. Easy prey. Uh, and my when I was four, my brother went to prison when I was 14 years old. For the first time. He went, this is the first time he went to prison. Um, and so I started in on uh, doing a little bit of, with my neighbor, mentor, a little bit of Taekwondo with him. Oh, okay. So you yep. did some Taekwondo. Yep. See, yep. that's my background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, my yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. It's yeah. so much fun. And then um, started in on the wrestling as well. Sure. And w- once my brother got out of jail, I was able to issue him an ass whooping. <laughs> and he never bothered me again. Wow. How, old, how much older is your brother than you? Uh, three years. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a substantial age difference. Yeah. Between yeah. the ages of like yeah. fifteen and twenty five, three years is a right. lot of time. Yep. You yep. know, like you can but be. But it's see- also a lot of time when you're young and you start exercising, working out. Yeah. Sport, martial arts, your growth, their rate of growth is substantial. You know, yeah. How much you could grow in such a short period of time. Sure. Yeah. So, I was ready for him. <laughs> that's great. I, I I always tell people when I'm. 
uh, teenagers come up to me at expos and meet me. They're like, you got any advice? I'm like, how old are you? And I like, just ask them how old they are. Yep. I'll, 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 I'll beef them up too. Like I'll say, he said, I'm like 15. I'm like, oh, you look 19. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pump them up. Yeah. Pump them up. I don't want to make yeah. them feel good. Right. But I, I always give them advice, like do as much as you can before you're 20, because anything you learn before 20 is like permanent almost. Right. Like I, I got skills and stuff, like training skills mm -hmm. that I got before I'm 20. Like I, they're permanent basically. Right. And it's just, it's good to get into at that age. But, uh, now you do something, um, combat strength training. Mm -hmm. That's, that's your curriculum. Yes. I think you have a gym around here Yeah. Uh, other than the driveway gym. I had, had, but after, uh, you know, cor uh, Corona Cation. Sure. Call it, yeah. We, we, sh like a lot of gyms, we shut down uh, temporarily, but we shut ours down permanent. Okay. So it was, it was, a it was a combat strength training slash, uh, mixed martial arts gym. Okay. So I co-own that with a guy, but we shut it down. But a lot of the training videos that I see uh, for that on your channel mm -hmm. and otherwise had a didn't look as much combat as much as like like resistance training, mm -hmm. like uh, speed training, stuff yeah. like that. So you kind of came to this thing now where uh, he has a split, guys. It's not like a body part split. It's not like a power thing split. It's uh, why don't you describe it for us? Yeah. So um, the the recipe. I like to tell people what the recipe is. You know. So it's uh, you work in anaerobic chunks in circuit to near metabolic threshold to meet an aerobic goal. Yeah. Um, and then I have a weak split, which gives purpose. You know, you want you want to go into a workout with purpose. What is my reasoning for doing this? And I like to tell people the reason you're working out is is fourfold: uh, self preservation, longevity, the ability to save your own life, the ability to save somebody else's life, and the abil the ability to kick somebody's ass. Yeah. And then I break the work week down into a power day, strength day, speed and quickness, and hypertrophy and skills. Okay. Uh, and you could lump, I'm trying to mitigate excuses. Okay. So what are excuses people have? Time. All right. Time is out of the equation because my workout only takes you 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, gym. Well, guess what? You don't need a gym. Yeah. You need very minimum, minimal gear. Uh, and then, you know, money. For gear and stuff like that, you don't have to spend a lot. Right. You really don't. So my objective is to mitigate people's excuses and get them active, get them moving. Mm -hmm. Because motion is lotion. Mobility is survivability. I think even for people that are advanced in experience, like some of the hardest problems to solve with training is is still kind of lumped into that motivation category, mm -hmm. like discipline, motivation. Like we all know the quotes about that stuff, but just – I find some, for me, like some of the most useful hacks are just like naming things. Once you give something a name, then you can, now you know what it is. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, noticing that there's a lot of hesitation people have before they train. This is even like pro bodybuilders. I know like all the, like they sit around and they have their whole uh, shuffling around, kicking their feet, getting their gym bag, working, making their pre-workout bags, got to digest a meal. And it's just all these fucking excuses right. before they go train them. Like, Dude, that's that's your that's kind of like a problem. They they don't see that as a problem. Like you just gotta you, you gotta trick your body. Like don't hesitate. And yeah. I noticed the key word for me was like hesitation. So mm -hmm. you, you're you're finding ex, you know trying to find ways to get rid of the excuses most yep. people have. It's like time, money, and just then there's like not feeling good. Yeah, or they say I'm not motivated. Sure. Well, guess what? Neither am I. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about that? You've had some battles with. Uh, yeah, real if briefly. That's okay, if no, 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 it's that. fine. I, I, I can disclose it now because I'm beating this thing and I'm feeling better. Uh huh. When I was, I have a disease called polymyalgia rheumatic, PMR. Oh, uh, started in May of 21. I became nearly completely immobile. Uh huh. You know, buttoning a shirt, opening a water bottle, driving a car, getting dressed. Impossible. Opening a water bottle. Yeah, impossible tasks. Huh. Uh, so uh, uh, it it robbed me of enthusiasm and motivation. Robbed. Completely freaking gone. And I'm still in that boat. Even though I feel better, um, I just have a lack of energy, a lack of enthusiasm, a lack of motivation. So you got to rely on discipline. Yeah. Discipline will trump motivation any day. And then once you follow that discipline – and you start moving, you develop a motivation. You 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 start nurturing that flame mm -hmm. into a fire, you know, into a blaze, into an inferno. 
<laughs> and then once that thing starts, you know, starts uh, firing or firing up and becoming uh, hotter and hotter, you just got to keep the blaze alive. You got to keep the discipline going. Yeah. I like the uh, thing you told me about earlier where um, you you kind of head off that problem the evening before. Yes. So you'll know that you have a certain workout yep. the next day, mm -hmm. and you're going to write on a whiteboard one movement. Mm -hmm. If not, I mean, let me ask you a question. If you write that down, if nothing else, do you tell yourself, if nothing else, all I do is that? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to write it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, I, 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 I'm a slave to whiteboards. I have three of them. A year. <laughs> really? A month. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and a day. A year, a month, and a they're day. all in different places. The year is in my office. Okay. What's going on in the year? Uh, and it's all jotted down so I can look at that and I look at it every day. Uh huh. Uh, the, this month is in my laundry room. I look at that six times a day as I'm walking in and out. That's the month. Okay. That's the month. You know, what's going on this week and later this month? Uh, for instance, you were on there. I crossed you out this morning. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the month one. And then on my refrigerator is what's going on tomorrow. So at night, I jot down either tasks that I want to accomplish. Yeah. Besides for, you know, normal work. Right? Uh-huh. What tasks do I want to accomplish? What chores? What chores suck? And if it's on my whiteboard, I have to abide by it, man. I kind of capitulate to my whiteboards. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Why, but, why whiteboards and not blackboards? Oh, no, no reason. Okay. I think, I think <laughs> Some just, people are really divided on those right. two well, things. I, think I don't just care because either. while I was in the military, we used a lot of whiteboards. Okay. That's a great answer. Yep. Um, and then for workout, I'll, put, I'll jot down the day. Like, let's say speed and quickness. Uh huh. Underline it. And then I'll jot down just one exercise. I said, What do I want to do tomorrow? What is it? <sighs> and I mean, a lot, of, a lot of times when I'm working out, it's daunting because I do not feel good. My legs hurt, my knees hurt, my, yeah. back, my shoulders hurt um, because the PMR attacks everything muscles, joints, and bones. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll write down that one thing like sprints. Man, the ability, you know, because uh, uh, I wouldn't I, want you sprinting after wow, me. I'd be like, oh, sprints no. are great. A lot of people post 50 don't do sprints anymore. Well, I think there's actually data that shows like 90% of the people after the age of 30 will never sprint again. Right. That's a scary statistic. Yeah. I read that. I was like, whoa. I was like, and then I thought, when was the last time I full out ran? I right. was like, oh shit, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into good sprinting uh, shape again. Uh, if I'm going to, I want to boast about something four years ago, right before I got sick, uh, four years ago, I did a 456 seconds. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Really? So, yeah. Now, That's really now it would fast. be a minute and a half, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm still trying to nibble at that. You know, that was an under 60 seconds, yes. 400. Yep. yep. That's booking it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's a lot. That's fast. Yep. Yep. Wow. I'm real happy with that. So I, I, I you know, I want to keep incorporating sprints as long as my body says it's okay. Yeah. I'm going to throw them in there maybe, you know, once a week, if not once every two weeks. Jeez, that's still aggressive in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I don't think there's anything, one of the most painful exercises that you can pick, honestly, mm -hmm. is a 400 meter sprint as fast oh, as you can. Talk that, about that metabolic is, threshold. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that just makes your organs just feel yes. like, you just feel like this visceral burning pain mm -hmm. you don't get that from almost anything else right yeah it's bad that is so. true metabolic threshold you know yeah. yeah it's great i love those 400s so working up to this point like what what are your just out of curiosity now now you're almost 60 mm -hmm. and you know from <laughs> solve some personal problems here guys you probably heard me complain about my age a number of times <laughs> in a couple of recent videos i'm just I've had to die as one athlete because gymnastics and acrobatics and stuff like that at a 38-year-old at a 250-pound body, it's like, look, I'm not getting any younger, and I don't really want to get any lighter at this right, point either. Right, right. And even if I did get lighter, I'd never be as good as I was when I was younger. The risk-reward ratio isn't there. The enthusiasm for that isn't there. But there's a lot of other things you can do. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's absolutely. always something that you can train. But – you said, and I've heard you say this a number of times, that uh, a man is at his peak in his mid-40s. If you maintain a level of fitness, yeah. right? if you maintain a level of fitness for a man and a woman, I believe the same is true for a woman, you can reach uh, maximum effectiveness in, in your mid-40s. Yeah. I was the fittest in my life between 44 and 46. 
fittest in my life. Yeah. I mean, and I have heard that from nearly every uh, lifetime athlete that I've talked to. Really? Like athletes that are over 55, like me. Okay. Said, yep, absolutely. 44, 46, 47, 48. That's when I was the fittest. Wow. What What do you, what do you, um, what makes you the fit? What made you the fittest at that time? Like some, no idea. I think one of the things is you 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 learn to train smarter. Okay. Because you're thinking stronger, longer by that point. Uh huh. You know, and then um, staying clear from. Oh, this is a big one. Staying clear from all the BS and 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 not worrying about ego. Okay. That's a big one. You know, I don't have to compete with the thirty year old. Yeah. I'm good. You know, I uh, I mean, I still want to get it, but. But at some point, you got to check your ego. Okay. And you got to listen to your body more. So I think you just get smarter. Yeah. You know, you get a little more wise, a little more intuitive and in tune to what your body is telling you at mm-hmm. that time. Uh, you, you pay attention more to diet, things like that. And you just work smarter. Yeah. Yeah. No, right? no well, PRs. I, yeah. I yeah. That. yeah I people heard you say PR, yeah, PR is a gimmicky yeah. term. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, I've heard you people say like, that. Yes. I was like, I like that. PR yeah. is a gimmicky term. Yeah. Yep. Can you, uh, yeah, it just I don't know. Expand on that. Well, I mean, it it it's so much. When people PR, what are they doing? One rep. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> what can you do for five reps? You know, I, five yeah. reps. That to me, that's a measure of strength. Five reps, not that one. Plus, I, I'm at a point now where I can check my ego. I don't need my intestines dropping into my testicles. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm good. Um, I don't yeah. need I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Uh huh. So I check the ego, man. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the the thing with like some people are looking at a PR is just like any the, well they'll, they'll break it down like like okay I'm PRing in five reps on this weight on this exercise in this way it's always like something new but it, at a certain point I also think like it's kind of a trap mm-hmm. actually like because it it, it kind of makes you look at this one thing over here that you probably aren't shouldn't be paying attention to like that's yeah. not the only thing you need to look at right. is am I doing better than last time mm-hmm. you know it's like well, how are you measuring that? There's a lot of other things you're not looking at that will make you better, right. in my opinion. Yep. So I, I find that's important. Um, you know, something, uh, jumping a little bit laterally here, um, your experience in the military, how does some of the things, you don't need to tell me about, you know, what you've been through, but some of the mindsets, some of the, what you've learned to emotional control and stuff, how does that translate into, like, I don't know, doing a driveway workout, you know what I mean? Well, I was I was in places and worked with people where, there is there is no quit. Okay. You know, I mean, a guy will run himself to death. <laughs> you know, there's just no quit. It's 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 a it's a it's a mindset unlike anything I've seen outside. And and this goes for like special ops in general, right? So yeah. regardless of what service it is, like a special ops guy, there's no quit in that individual. And I remember when I got to a certain unit, when I when I got to uh, uh, Delta. Um, thinking, man, I am the fittest guy ever. And then I realized, oh, damn, I am average in this place. Wow, average, average. in what respect? Like in everything. Okay. Everything, skills, shooting, post-quarter battle, running, lifting, whatever it is. I was mediocre. Wow. Yep, I was mediocre. So um, having a big ego and thinking that I was a badass um, uh, really – made me you know step back and think <laughs> yeah and and um it it really motivated me to work harder yeah you know and uh and i still have that same attitude right now mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 engraved into my hard drive it's okay. still a part of me it's still with me right now. yeah it's interesting um what you're saying there is like you're you were a fish and you put yourself in a bigger pond yep but i think there's also kind of Maybe there should be some sort of limit on what pawns you put yourself in because anytime you fire up your phone these days, it's like that shit can kind of make you like you can kind of get in your head after a while. We it see, can. Oh, it, the feed is just filled up with like highlights, you right. know, with what the algorithm is feeding yep. you. Like, and you think like, oh my god, like, well, when you're comparing yourself to Larry Wheels or you know Thor Bjornson or something, then it's just like you know I don't know where the where the limit, where, where you need to draw the line in terms of like, I, I need to focus on me and like, yeah. or I need to stop. I, I look at it through a filter. Sure. There is no way I could replicate what you're doing. Okay. There's no way. And a lot of the guys that I follow, there's no way I could replicate what they're doing. Yeah. But a lot of it goes the same way. There's no way that I, they could do what I'm doing. But I'm going to I'm gonna look at those good quality feeds, 
you know, of people who are fit. Yeah. Fit for time, not, you know, instant fit. Or, sure. But they, they've stood the test of time. You know, they've, they've been uh, active almost their whole lives, and they're creative. Okay. So I'm going to take creative chunks from them. I'm not, they're not going to deflate my, you know, my ego or anything like yeah. that. You know, when I see guys like you doing, like, superhuman stuff, I go, cool, instead of, oh, I will never be able to do that. Yeah. I know I'm never going to be able to do that, <laughs> but I go, cool. Yeah. Ah, that, and that's a good idea, too. I'm going to take what he's doing drop 200 pounds off of it <laughs> yeah. and replicate it myself. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I, I think you should look at that stuff as, uh, um, you know, motivation. Yeah. And that's why I put out uh, information on my feed too. Yeah. I, I like to think I'm an idea guy, you know, because that's another uh, excuse. I don't know what to do when I go to the gym. Well, guess what? Just watch my feed and I'm going to give you examples. Power day, strength day, speed and quickness, hypertrophy, skills. And um, because... I'm an idea guy, you know, I'm a creator. Yeah. I like to uh, create. I have, uh, I'm, I'm blessed with uh, like artsy fartsy imagination and creativity. Yeah. So I could come up with some kooky stuff. You do. Uh, I, I mean, I, that's why I started following you. It was like, it's like I'm going to do that in a video. And I did. I, I mean, I've taken some of your stuff and I've done it. I've tagged you a few times and it's like, but you're very, very creative when it comes like the tire one up the wall. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I squat one with a with a band is like pushing yourself in a cart backwards. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just uh, the limited amount of equipment you selected, like every one of them, so open ended. Yeah. It's just like this very is very versatile, very ver like a kettlebell is the ultimate mm -hmm. example. But right. you have a lot of things that are just like that laying around. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. I, I like what you just said though. It's just like because a lot of people are like social media like you know makes you feel like oh, you can curate your feed you're the you're the master of who you're following right you don't have to hit the explore thing unless you want to mm -hmm. you could just follow like these people and then like get ideas and just kind of get fired up because a lot of th you see what i'm saying like so you're right you can mm -hmm. just pick what you're looking at right. like who are some of the people that you follow that uh uh so uh um i forget his name always be an athlete you follow that guy Okay, I don't That's think I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, the uh, live kinetically, you know, okay. Coach Dan. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, Landmine University. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Joel. Uh, Doctor Joel. We'll just call him that. I forget his last name. Uh huh. Um, you know, I don't know everybody's name. You know that I follow, but there are so many. I follow a lot of boxing feeds. Okay. Because that's part of my thing. Kickboxing feeds. Um, and I learn from these things, you know, that people who have good quality feeds, you could learn from, there's so much visceral crap out there on the interwebs right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And people are consumed <laughs> by it and that's going to have an adverse effect on your psyche. Yeah. You know, and your mental well being. get off of that shit, man. You don't need to be angry or scared, you know, or stupid. Right. Because a lot of these feeds are making you stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, but man, I follow good quality people. I wish that this were, uh, like a preemptive strike, and I would have written them all down so I could tag them all because there's so many. But I'll I'll, I'll send it to you in the notes. Yeah, well, it'll be in the description yep. of this video. I want to see who you follow. Yep. It's like I mean, I guess I could just click to see who you follow. Right, right. Well, that's another. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, there you go. I'll just go 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 yep. look at your profile. A lot of people following. do that. I, that's yeah. a good way because um um I notice that people I follow when I look at who they're following a lot of the same feeds. Yeah. A lot of the same. You know, good quality workout. And I don't do all this stuff that they do. I yeah. follow a, a Olympic, um, uh, uh, a guy who coaches Olympic lifts. Sure. Because it's good information. I don't do Olympic lifts anymore, but he's got good information. Um, and his name's slipping my mind right now. All right, I'll put it in the notes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's but, good. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you can kind of like flux and like shrink and flux and shrink in terms of like, the amount of like information overload type mm -hmm. thing you expose yourself to so much that you just get paralyzed by right. the paradox of choice yep. or you can like you be shrunk down in your own world so much that you're not being like you're not really trying new things and such so i think you got pretty damn good control over that mm -hmm. you know you found a pretty good formula yep. do you ever uh good but sometimes i feel like it's good just to have like a routine you know like I, it looks like you do think that what routine is the it's the playground of a dull mind playground of a dull mind yeah. in terms of but uh what do you what do you think about like 
having certain things on routine in your life and other things more open-ended. Well, I, I, I have the, the days, power, strength, speed, and quickness. So that's kind of a That's routine. a pattern that you yes, put together. Yes, it's a pattern. How about a morning routine? Uh, yep, I have, I have that as well. What yep. is that? Uh, so, everyone loves morning routines. Yeah, so morning, we gotta talk, everyone well, loves morning so, routines. Um, uh, uh, as soon as I get out of bed, go pee. I drink yeah. a quarter water. Right. Down a quarter water. That is life changing. If you could power slam a whole quarter water when you get up, life changing. Right. It, you feel so good after that. I grab a cup of coffee. If my wife's still in bed, I'm going to let her sleep. And I, I keep peeking on her, peek, peek. And then I'll go outside <laughs> yeah. and I'll, I'll earth or ground. Uh huh. You know, just walk in my backyard barefoot. You know, so it's, there's no TVs on, no electronics, no screens. Stay off of that crap initially. Um, when I come inside, the dogs are ready to go for a walk. I walk them across the street into the woods. Uh-huh. So it's just a, you know, welcome the day. Oh, and back up. Uh, before coffee, I look at my whiteboard. I'm oh, looking, yeah? Look yeah, the, the whiteboard. whiteboard. The I look whiteboard. at the whiteboard, and I go, okay, good. And then I want to bring my wife a cup of coffee in bed. After okay. All that stuff. Oh, that's nice. Yep. That's, so that's my morning routine. You do spend a lot of time outside, too. Yep. Like, you... uh you have an office outside. Well, yeah, I just do. I, I, I'm not, a, I can't be inside. Inside <laughs> is depressing. For me. Mm-hmm. Um, so my gym is outside. Any tasks that I have that I can do outside, I'm going to do them here. Any office work that I can do out here, I'm going to do them out in my driveway, regardless of the weather. If it's raining out, I just open the garage, sit in the garage. In the bay? Yep. And yeah. just bundle up and do my, uh, you know, if it's winter time and it's, it's cold and windy and rainy. Yeah. Now you said you had a a yearly whiteboard in your office. Yeah. So what's the office for? <laughs> well, uh, I, yeah, no, it's for the, the office yeah, just has yeah. a whiteboard and books. Well, you know, I've got my computer there. I have to get on and do fulfillment every morning. Okay. Check my email. Uh, look at class registrations for you know tactical shooting classes and things like that. Yeah. But and then I'm writing another book uh, to be. Uh, announced what the title is and everything like that but so. yeah you've written some books i yep. on amazon dude like the the sale like the number of like there's they did good. well yeah they yeah, look yeah. like they did really well yeah. i need to pick up the sentinel one yep that looks like a good one yeah. everyone should read yeah sentinel's great and i wrote that in 2012 but it gained popularity in 2020 <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say it was probably 2020 because I, it was all the stuff that was happening to us you know with, yeah uh with prepping, with civil unrest, with, uh, you know, all, all those things that happened to us yeah. individuals in 2020, they were in the Sentinel book that I wrote in 2012. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. But uh, as a writer, though, like, writing is not easy. Like, a lot I of people, you, no, I love it, too. Yeah. But, I mean, it, I mean, a lot of people have a hard time writing. Yep. It's just, it's amazing that you can write as well. What kind of... Uh, what, what kind of disciplines do you have when it comes to writing? Is it really natural? Does it just come out yeah, easy? Or, you know what? Or do you have to do anything? People ask that. Well, how do you, how, where do you start if they want to write? With? I said, man, just dump thoughts onto paper. Yeah? Just dump them on there. You could uh, correct, copy, paste, move stuff around later. Yeah. Right now, I, I do headers or bullet points uh-huh. and just uh, put thoughts to paper based on that bullet point until I'm done with it. And then if I think that there might be more thoughts in that related topic, I'll just highlight that paragraph red. Okay. You know, go on to the next one and go on to the next one. If I find myself staring at the computer screen thinking, screen and thinking, I get up and leave. (laughs) Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just get up and leave. And, uh, I find for me when, when it comes to writing, I've written stuff before as well. Um, like 45 minutes to about an hour is about the sweet spot because after that, it, it feels good when you're like in flow and you're writing for like two or three hours. Mm-hmm. Like if you get carried or like really into it, I'll look back later and be like, well, everything I did after like the first half hour is garbage anyway. Right. You just end up deleting or editing. Yep. So, so yep. it's kind of like, uh, in a way, it's kind of like analogous to working out because yep. it's like you need to stop. Like if you feel like really good today, mm-hmm. some of the hardest thing to do is like restraint because like, well, now I got to think about my training tomorrow. Right. If I just do another 25 mm-hmm. minutes because I feel fucking jacked right yep. now, yep. I'm going to jack myself up, but not be able to do things tomorrow. It's That's like, right. I got to, I got to think about, you know, moving forward. So it's like that with writing. As yeah, well. man, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point right now where, you know, having felt bad for so long, really appreciate feeling good. <laughs> but there's a double-edged sword there because on days I feel good, I want to attack a workout. Attack. Yeah. I mean, balls to the wall, just 
burning at both ends, attack. And I have to tell myself, you should probably stop now. Yeah. Just go ahead. Don't do that last thing or those last 10 pull-ups or that last sprint. Don't. You're good. You're good. So for me to pull the reins back on that one takes, that also takes discipline. On days I'm feeling good, I don't want to, I don't want to finish a workout uh, to the point where I'm incapacitated. Right. I like to say, you know, I, I don't want to eat until I'm stuffed or work out till I'm incapacitated. Yeah. I want to do either or and be able to turn around and kick somebody's ass. <laughs> right. I think, uh, I think I've heard you say like, if you can't kick someone's ass after you walk outside the gym, right. like you've done too much. Yep. You know, it's interesting because a lot of bodybuilders don't want to be able to walk downstairs and right. do legs. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a different philosophy. It's a different style of training, but also I, I feel like having something having left something on the table when you leave a workout in that way, yep. not sandbagging a workout, mm -hmm. you know, but like having practicing some restraint is better for most athletes and people. Yep. You know what I mean? Like there's, I, I, I don't think there's like, in terms of like just destroying yourself so you can't even walk. It's like, I, I feel like that's something you do every now and then. Just every kinda, now and then. Yes. Just like a, a gut, gut check. check work. Yep. Gut check workout or every uh, now and then. Yeah. But I don't think that's like that going, if that's your like mode of operandum, that's what you think is that's your expectation. That's what you think is normal. Then like you're gonna burn out. Yeah, you know you're not gonna work out. <laughs> you yeah. know you're gonna come up with excuses. You're and, gonna hurt yourself. And 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 the thing is too, when you get to that level of fatigue, yeah, and you're just going through emotion, you stop thinking about the motion itself, and now you're susceptible to injury. And man, I've so many people get hurt working out, bro. It's called fitness, not brokenness. Don't get hurt working <laughs> out. Yeah. That's, that's counter to the objective. So yeah, I don't, I don't do it. So right now, um, like going from like 45 to now, where are your goals training now? Is it just like, you know, like what, what, what kind of goal shifting, uh, is, has happened? Well, um, uh, I want to, um, I, I I'm curious about defying age. You know, sure. how smart can I work out to to uh uh so that I could maintain this level of fitness for how long? Yeah. You know, so I want to uh um uh, stay clear from as many injuries as possible. Um I want to be um just as fit as possible for as long as possible. I really don't have that many goals, but every once in a while I'll put it on the board. You know what? I want to be able to do this again. Yeah. So I want to be able to do, for instance, um, uh, twenty-five dead hang pull-ups. Yeah. You know. So and I did that recently. I did. Oh it. yeah. Yeah, I did it. I was like, it didn't take me long to build up to that. Yeah. It was more mind over matter than anything else. Mm -hmm. But I used to be really, really good at pull-ups. I could just knock them out. You know, thirty-five. Damn. Pull-ups. Yeah. Uh which, you know, a pull-up is very important. I just have to throw that in there. It, a pull-up is life-saving. Right. You know, to be able to do a pull-up. And a lot of adults can't pull up their own body weight. Dude, I get it. I get it. You know, you've gained weight. Life happens. You're freaking working your ass off. Your kids, blah, 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 blah. But, um, <laughs> and if you can't do a pull-up, just use a resistance band. Throw it over a pull-up bar. Yeah. Put your foot in it and do those pull-ups. Mm -hmm. it, it's... For most people, there's a couple exercises that they should do if they don't do anything, and that's one of them. I think a pull-up is necessary. It's funny. I think a lot of a lot of people look at bodybuilders that do pull-ups, and they're like, oh, see, so-and-so did pull-ups. Yeah. It's like, well, for bodybuilding, it's, you know, like, think about what goes into a pull-up. Like, that's abs. Oh, that's, that's 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 like everything. Not just the back. It's like there's so much Dude, involved there. It's, it's like It's forearms. It's fingers. It's rear delts. It's biceps. It's back. It's abs. I mean, you're hitting so many things on it. Yeah, I, I knew like because when I used to do a lot of backflips, like the the chin up uh, with weight was oh. one of the best oh. carry one of the best assistance oh. exercises I'm, for I'm, that. I'm, I'm starting to have dry heaves just thinking about <laughs> it. That, those those will smoke you. Yeah, and people don't do them. Chin ups, you know. Yeah, chin ups will smoke you. Oh my god, you know. And if you do them with a uh, reduce the amount of resistance with a band, so that way you could do like thirty of them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> I think it's yeah. It's it, I mean, if you just want to like stereotypically categorize an exercise as functional and just don't worry about the technicalities of it, it's a functional exercise. Yes, it's very like, functional. So you're you're interested in defying age, mm -hmm. and there's there's more that goes into that just working out. So you've you've a uh, you know God, 
He's got a really cool backyard over there with a lot of, he's got chickens, he's got a garden, he's got a composting outhouse yep. thing. So, like, let's talk about diet for a second. There. Yeah, man, peace of mind, right? It's real important um, when it comes to that defying age. Most of the food that we ingest from the grocery stores, I just say toxic. I don't, you know, try to, uh, um, you know, uh, cover it with flowers. I mean, it's toxic, you know, the, yeah. the even the meat we get, you know, buy from the grocery store, it's freaking, it's not super healthy. So I try to source, I try to grow as much food as I can and then local sources to order meat and things like that. Yeah. Um, diet, it, it, you know, speaking of diet, people always ask, what's your diet, bro? What's your diet? Wow, <laughs> man, you must have, are you paleo? Yeah. You, oh my way, God. You, the are you this? Are you that? Yeah. I'm it's like, a religion. I just eat food, man. Yeah. I, when do you eat? How many meals? I eat when I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I don't eat until I'm full. I, I, I make sure I, I'm not eating until I'm full. Yeah. Uh, and then, w- w- what do you mean you just eat food? Yeah, it's food. It's meat or veg. It doesn't yeah. come out of a bag or a box. If it comes yeah. out of a bag or a box, it's a product. It's not food. It's got a list of ingredients on there. Yeah. So diet is real easy, and it doesn't have to be expensive either. That's another reason people say, well, eating healthy is expensive. No, no it's not. You it's, buy shit on sale. Really you grow not, veg. No. Yeah. You know, I mean... You don't have, when you eat meat, you don't have to uh, eat freaking uh, filet mignon every day. You know, mm-hmm. you're just eating meat. You're eating chicken. You're eating fish. You're eating salmon. You're eating, you know. Uh, yeah. Diet's pretty, pretty simple. It, 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 easy. Take a grocery store, shop on the periphery of a grocery store. Yep. That's where food is. Yeah. Except for the bakery aisle. The whiter yeah. the bread, the sooner you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the bakery aisle. So yeah. shop at the periphery of a grocery store. What do you need in the guts of a grocery store? Coffee. Uh, olive oil, salt, uh, spices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spice. <laughs> when it comes to food stuff, that's what you need in the center of a grocery store. All your food is on the outside. Yeah. You know, your dairies, your meats, your vets. Yeah. Hate to get into specifics, but I mean, you got chickens for eggs. Yeah. Yeah. You don't actually eat them. No, no I eat, uh, oh, I eat the eggs. Yeah, no, you eat yeah, the eggs. Yeah, I don't eat yeah. the chickens. But the chickens are like your pets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you let them yeah, free range the around the four of them have, uh, they've lost enthusiasm to lay, you know, yeah. they're old, so... They're just buddies. You know, they're my girls. You I have know, a lot of girls in the house. I have two do- two female dogs. I everyone that's guys. recommended that I start chicken, have chickens, because I got a lot of acreage, you know, a pretty good amount yep. of acres. Three acres is pretty good. Um, everyone's like, you can have some chickens back there. I was like, nah, that's too much work, man. And like, I see what you got. I'm like, it's so easy. It's not a lot of work. Yeah. And it looks kind of fun. Yep. You know, if you're not going to slaughter so them, easy. you just eat the eggs. So easy. It's all, it's, there's, there's no work to it, whatever. You know, clean water, clean food. Give them some treats every once in a while. Yeah. I let them free range. You know, I say, let's go on a field trip, girls. <laughs> you know, they roam around the backyard and peck at grass. So easy. I think sourcing local is pretty important, too. Like, I, I have one raised bed last year, and you can do a lot with one raised bed, actually, yep. even a large guy like me. Mm-hmm. But we have people around. It's like they sell vegetables on their porch they grow. We go and in the little box, you know, put a couple bucks in there, yep. and we'll get some tomatoes, some squash. He'll have a watermelon every now and then, peppers. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's better to do that and get that because, you know, you're supporting local. Yep. It, it's actually cheaper. It's not bombarded with pesticides. No, and honestly, like, obviously it tastes better. It's right. really interesting to see how fast it decays, though. Because, yep. like, I'll buy it's food. <laughs> I mean, you'll watch a cucumber sit on your, uh, it'll rot in, like, days. Yeah. You buy a cucumber from the grocery store, it's like, how long has that been in there? I think oh, yeah. I bought that in November. Yeah. Well, it's January now. Like, whoa, fuck. The grocery store food will yeah. last forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is an indicator. There's a reason it's lasting forever. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's apples will sit there for a while. I mean, it's it's better than nothing, but. Yeah, I think I have 12 can, raised beds. I haven't done, done a count. Yeah, you do have a lot of them, yeah. so that means you can. Yeah, um, I can. I blanch. I freeze. I them? flash freeze. We dehydrate. Okay. Yeah, we do, all, we do it all. a lot of food preservation. Yeah. A lot of it. Yep. I got jars, cans everywhere. Yep. Let's get really granular here, mm-hmm. all right? Let's just do a full day of eating for you. What, how many meals? Two or three? Oh, uh, you know what? It, it kind of varies. It could be two or five. Okay. Like when I'm doing the, the stew, Yeah. for instance, I do like a cup and a half, maybe four times a day. Okay. Mm, something like that. But it's, yeah. it's, it's chicken thighs, it's carrots, it's spinach, it's potatoes. That's it. Oh, lentils. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You take any supplements? Uh, very, very few. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking, and it's only since recently. I do um, greens. Oh, greens powder. Yep. Greens yeah. powder. I do a multivitamin. Um, 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 and then I do uh, the, uh, uh, I do a protein, a mushroom protein. 
Okay, interesting. The mushroom protein. Mushroom protein. protein. Yep. yep. I've never heard it's of a mushroom that. Mushroom protein. It's a, it's it's a, um. Is it it's trippy? a protein powder with no, no, no. It's not magic <laughs> mushrooms yet. Is it trippy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, mushroom protein. Uh, but I am a fan of the magic mushrooms now. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. Uh, but um, yeah. And then um, some uh, eye droppers of uh, what is it? Silver? It's natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, um, colloidal. So silver? I do the. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. I do the uh, turmeric and the um, ginger and. Uh, oh, these are all like natural anti-inflammatory. Yes, this yes. I just treat dropped that into my. Um, yes, it helps. It helps treat the condition. That it's interesting. The condition that you have uh, or had. Mm -hmm. um, it's. It sounded kind of like autoimmune. Right. And I've had autoimmune issues in the past. I think a lot of people have, and mm -hmm. a lot of them just resolve on their own. I can remember when I was. Uh, what was I? I think it was. It was two thousand. Nine, and I had this thing where every time I walked out in the sun, I had these giant ringworms appear Ooh, on me. Yeah. And I, I took a picture of all the medicine I tried, mm -hmm. and it was like 20 things. Mm -hmm. and, and the only thing I figured out was if I go out in the sun, uh, it triggers it. So yep. I was like, I just got to treat the symptom. But as strange as Was it like tinea? I have no idea. We never, I got that. They, they took a sample, and they said it was it lupus. Is, oh, okay. And they're like, it can't possibly be lupus, but it came back as lupus. But the thing was... Um, after that year, I mean, I tried, I was like, this gotta be a synergy thing. Maybe it's something I'm eating in yep. combination with this. Maybe it's some sort of environmental thing. I don't know I'm being exposed to, but sure shit next year. It never came back. It was just one of those huh. things. I know I never, I never seen it since, but I just feel like autoimmune things can just pop out. Right. And there's just something in your environment, some sort of combination that just like you, it's re you can't figure it out, right. but you can treat the symptoms, mm -hmm. which is what you did. Oh, I think. Yeah, I did. Oh, well, I, I treated him to a doc at first. Okay. So it was bad. I mean, the, the PMR was bad. Like I said, it, it left me incapacitated. Getting dressed in the morning was a about a 15 to 20 minute laborious process. Getting dressed. Wow. After getting dressed, I would need a nap because I'm exhausted. Whoa. Exhausted. That's no. no I, I could go on and on. It was, it was, it was horrible. Um, and, I mean, the horrible part lasted for... A year, nine to ten months. So just under two years, the horrible part. Um, but I was on a cocktail of uh, uh, prednisone, um, hydroxychloroquine, uh, zofoslazine, and then with nerve pain, with inflammation comes nerve pain. So the gabapentin as well. Yeah. Big, big doses of that stuff. And it did make me feel better. But the thing is, um, a little bit. You know, made me feel at better. what but cost? I'm taking chemistry, right? Yeah. So I lost weight. I went from my fighting weight of 210 to 195. Legs atrophied, uh, and I also had a little gut. Yeah. <laughs> and I never, in a million years, thought I'd be motivated by vanity, but that did. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror, going, "What is this?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, my wife and I worked hard on this whole process, research, research. We tied everything. You know, every every diet adjustment. Um, every medication, but I wanted to get off meds. Scabs on my arms, you know. I still yeah. have scars on my arms from all the scabbing. Son of a bitch. Um, and we chucked in December of 22. So this is about a year and a half yep. after Des this yep. started yep. coming about. December of 22, I threw away all my prescription meds. I just stacked them up and scooped them right into the garbage can. Now, to be fair, I've been weaning off for the past month and a half. Sure. Reducing, and, and I had to find the balance. How much pain can I tolerate during the day? Yeah. Um, oh, huh. Dude, the pain was nauseating. And then I uh, started a bombardment of just natural anti-inflammatories. Magic elixir was um, infrared sauna. Okay. I started going in town to a uh, salt spa, and they had salt spa. Yeah, and they had the infrared saunas in there. And what is a salt spa? I don't know. It's spas with freaking salt <laughs> Hello, know, God. Okay. okay yeah i don't know you know <laughs> salt see that in the coming. air yeah yeah all this stuff it's it's supposed to be real healthy for you i don't know much about <laughs> yeah. it but the infrared saunas were in the salt yeah. spa mm -hmm. um which i guess there's huge benefit to salt spa but i just don't know enough about it uh-huh uh but i when i got out of the infrared sauna the first time you're sweating felt, the toxins out yeah, or something but, yes but i felt like my wife went with me and I, I, she said, how do you feel? I said, Rebecca, I got to tell you, I feel like 30% better. And she started crying. Wow. Because I limped going in, 
and I was able to walk coming out. Um, four sessions with with that with them, I bought my own. <laughs> okay, so I bought my own. Which one do you use? Uh, I don't know the brand name of it. I forget. Is it Clearlight? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Other have people one. have asked me, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, if people want to know, I could send them the link, but I will endorse it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good. So I'll just cook that body. Unlike traditional sauna, sauna which heats the air around you, yeah. the infrared sauna heats your body. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, you know, not cold plunges, but I would stand under the cold hose after the sauna. Outside. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. a different level of, of cold. Right. Yeah. Yep. I, I take yep. outdoors. Because now the air so. is getting to you and everything, you know, especially yeah. in the winter. Oh, my God. Uh, and then uh, started all the uh, natural anti-inflammatories. Yeah. And then... Uh, a craniosacral massage. Craniosacral massage. Is that like uh, is yes, that working yes, the back yes, of yes. your head? Right, right, right. It, 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 it's a type of massage that I, I'm, I'm probably going to jack this up, but it allows the spinal fluid uh, in your body from your brain and all this to, to flow better and allows or it offers the opportunity for your body to heal on its own. Okay. Something like that. Um, and then um, with uh, chronic pain comes chronic bad disposition just bad mood yeah well pain's and then distracting sleep, too. sleep problems you know yeah all pain keeps you up at night oh my god so uh shit that's like a whole thing yep you know? so i started um uh cannabis okay yeah about two years ago you know, yeah nightly right uh smoke it um and then uh psilocybin yeah and that regulated mood you know microdosing mm -hmm. mood good Good, good, good. There's a reason why those things are are illegal because they freaking work. Well, they're they're becoming legal, right? Like at least but they work. You know, that's yeah. why <laughs> alternative medicine, which yeah. is real medicine. <laughs> yeah. And now no. it's all alternative medicine. Well, I know people who are, um, have to have painkillers for chronic conditions yeah. or like really long term conditions, mm -hmm. and the painkillers just ruin your stomach. Ugh. Like they do a lot of things. It's like if you could switch to something like a THC product yep. for managing pain, right? Like you're in a better world i'm so much happier yeah I'm so much happier it's such a better mood uh and and knowing that i'm not filling my body full of poison all that big pharma crap yeah man uh probably gonna get shut down because i said big pharma <laughs> no probably not <laughs> but to get really granular again for a second um what happens if you uh go on a trip for four days to seven days and you don't get a chance to get into an infrared sauna and have some of these therapies that you have kind of in your mix yep. to kind of manage this condition, does the pain return? Uh, no, not anymore. Okay. I'm over the hump. Do you think you broke the cycle? I have, bro I have broken the cycle. It, it's ebbs and flows now. We're a week of just real uncomfortable. Like right now, I can feel it in the back of my neck, back of my shoulders, yeah, uh, in my legs, and in, my, in the bones in my legs. Uh, oh, but it's not good. bad. I've got mobility. I am not going to piss and moan about that, about yeah. this little bit of discomfort. Because I know what bad feels like. And when you know what bad feels like, you really appreciate feeling good. Really, really appreciate it. You know, you want to attack the day. Uh, so uh, on the road, the only thing is, you know, still eat healthy and exercise on the road. Yeah. That's it. Just ex I mean, I just went on vacation. I worked out every day. Uh, yeah. Where'd you go? Jamaica. Oh, what'd you do? Wait, work For out? workout? Yeah. Um, well, I brought, a, I brought a set of bands. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you can travel with those. Yep. Yeah, there you they, go. They, and they had a gym that was okay. Okay, yeah. Yep. I mean, gyms nowadays are what? Free weights, dumbbells. And every stuff time like that. I travel, uh, my expectation is just bottom of the barrel. Like, so everything that's just a little bit better than garbage, I'm like, oh, good. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I'm just excited, like, oh, there's a cable machine. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could do everything with a cable machine. <laughs> yeah. Just about everything. I could do almost everything with a cable machine. And I'm going to use one side at a time, big transverse mo 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 motions down and up. Uh, I could almost knock out almost everything with a cable machine. Yeah. And pull-ups. <laughs> well, I think we're good here. Like, we, we like to keep our podcast a little short here, Hell a little yeah. bite size for you guys. How about uh, any parting words in terms of, like, you know, you've worked with a lot of people in mm -hmm. terms of, like, I think there's a lot of valuable things here in terms of, like, just get going. Here are some things you can try to feel better. You know, this exercising makes you feel better. Yep. Getting through a – I think the last thing I, I kind of you, – you said something – I don't know if you – honestly, I don't know if you said in a right. podcast or outside when we're talking. What's this pain – you you broke oh, through a pain yeah, threshold. Pain threshold. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, that was like yeah, yeah. you're so in, in pain the in the height of the PMR. Yeah, when it was at its worst, at its peak, and this lasted the, the, the peak about uh, like I said a year and a half, right? Peak. I still worked out every day, painful. So 
I'd have to tell myself, number one, just get dressed for it. So I was doing the headband thing. That's your crotch rag. Yes, yes. <laughs> you called yeah. it a crotch rag. I, I would put on my, and I would tell my kids, putting on the headband was like putting on my cape. Okay. You know, so I dressed the part. Oh, like flipping a switch. Right. Like so, over the top. And then I would <laughs> sit right here in my driveway. Uh-huh. Just sit there and crank up the heavy metal. And then I would start warming up. Five pounds, just trying to pick it up. You know, whatever it is. And just go slowly through a motion and then slowly increase the weight. This would take about 45 minutes. Slowly increase the weight on a warm-up until I broke what I called the pain threshold. I mean, the pain when I was doing those things, if I kept it going and if I endured the pain for those 45 minutes, after 45 minutes, it necessarily it wouldn't necessarily subside, but I would get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I would understand it and 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 kind of draw partnership with it, you know. Uh -huh. Um and then I could freaking I could work out a little bit. You know, those who followed me, if you go back like two years and look at my workout feeds, all those on there are fake. They're all smoke and mirrors. That's my best possible reps. But you could also notice little legs. Yeah. You know, and how my shoulders uh, aren't aren't as big. You know, uh, but you could see it in those. I watched them just the other day, right yeah. before when we started talking about this. Mm -hmm. I went back and looked at those. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting, yeah. man. Um, well, thank you for the conversation here. This right is on. fantastic. I, man, like when I started like looking into some more of the stuff that you've done uh, before I came out here, I was like, I like this guy. Right on, I right was right. like, I was just like, this is awesome. I listened to your podcast. I went back and looked at your uh, Fit for Fifty videos yep. on YouTube. Those are great. And uh, so, yeah, you're just a fucking awesome dude. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. I love being awesome. <laughs> <laughs>